Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixel. In today's video, we are going to be going over Def products, what they are and how they work. But before this video starts, I just wanted to go over a few things. Make sure you join my Discord server. I provide on my server a chat for developers to talk about projects and whatnot, as well as video help in case you are struggling with my tutorials. I also wanted to point out from now on my videos will include the scripts in the description. Now let's get on with the tutorial. Before the tutorial starts and we get into our scripting, make sure that you go over to the Create tab on the website of Roblox. Uh, side note, I just wanted to make sure that when you guys watch my tutorials, please do not skip through the tutorial. There are so many things that I talk about that are very important to creating that specific thing that we're doing in the tutorial my latest simulator tutorials are things that i made sure that you guys have enabled especially the studio api and everyone is messaging me saying that it's not working so i'm gonna show you guys um in the beginning of the video what i want for you to do before we start so make every sure make sure that everything works so in the create tab you have all your games listed if you just opened up studio from the desktop um, and opened up a game, it will not be published. So make sure you go over to your studio, hit file, hit publish to Roblox as, and then you can create a new game by hitting the new place button right here. After you create a new place, it should be here. And I'm in the scripting testing place right here. Go over to the little gear icon and hit configure game. This is going to be very important. This is where you're able to edit everything in your game. Um, and one of the most important things is enabling studio access to API services. That means while you're in studio and testing, you can use things such as data store. Make sure this is always enabled since it's so helpful when you're testing. But we're not going to be using this in today's tutorial. Just make sure that this is on when you're looking at all my tutorials because that's the reason why it might not be working. But in today's video, we're going to be working with developer products, as I explained. Developer products are kind of like game passes, but you can buy them multiple times. There's something for, um, specifically, usually people use it for currency in game. So if you wanted to buy coins or gems or whatever your currency is, you could create a dev product and they'll buy it multiple times to get more and more. So they can't just buy it once with a game pass. Um, so... If you head over to the de developer products tab, you can create or click create new and you can insert a name, a description, price in Robux. You don't have to put um, a thumbnail, but you can. Um, once you create it, there will be an ID right here. Make sure that this is open while we're in our tutorial because we will be using this ID. There is also an edit button in case you messed up. You can go ahead and click it and edit the Robux. Now we can jump back into our tutorial, head back over to studio, and we're going to create a small text button, small GUI. So the way this tutorial is going to work is we're going to create a, uh, we don't need a frame, what am I doing? Um, we're going to have a text button that when you click, it will prompt you the purchase of the dev product. It'll let you buy it and it will give the player a hundred dollars so inside our text button you're going to insert a local script and we're going to create some variables um in my previous tutorials i have explained what variables mean they basically give um a name like when we use local local just makes sure it's a like client-sided we usually use it in a local script um you usually use them with any type of variable so We'll do local marketplace service equals, so we're giving this name a value. It can be a number value, it can be a string value, and it can also be an object. But we're actually going to, we're giving it an object, but it's also the service, um, marketplace service. This is very helpful in case there's like no way to access something without a variable. So this is going to represent the marketplace service service next we're going to create a service for players or a variable for players so we're going to get the service from game which is players so we're going to be able to access the players and then we're going to create another 
variable called product ID. Right here is where we're going to paste the ID of our product in. So pull back over your dev product screen window here and highlight over the ID, right click and search or er, click copy. You can also hit control V or control C. Uh, we're going to head back over to game and then you can either hit control V or control paste. So now that we have this, this is going to represent the product ID. Um, it's going to represent the ID of obviously what we're going to be buying. So um, now we're going to create a function script parent mouse button one click connect function prompt purchase. So what a function does is this method right here of, of using a function, um, it fires basically um, all scripts run up down so your variables are always going to be at the top you might have a function in there so when we click this button and anything that we put inside here we're going to put code runs when function is fired you don't have to type this as just notes for you guys so every, anything in here will fire once this once our button is clicked uh, mouse button one click represents us clicking with the left mouse button if you put left or mouse button to click, it will represent clicking with the right mouse button. So now we are going to type local player equals players dot local player. So you can create variables in a function outside of a function, but now we're making a variable that represents the local player from this players. So this is representing the service players, which is up here. And when you're in game, there will be an object inside of here. Like, you know, you open this and there's something in it. There will be a player icon. And when you're using a local script, you're able to use the local player, which represents you or whoever's playing. Um, you can see this button. No one else can see this button. Well, they have their own button. Everyone has their own button on their screen. That's what a screen GUI does. And a local script represents client side, which means the player side only on the player not on the server just the player so a local player is basically you so we use that to get the local player this is representing our local player uh, now we're going to use our marketplace service to prompt product purchase player product id so what this is does or what this is going to do is it's using our marketplace service variable to use this is already um, built into the service, which is prompt per product purchase. So it's going to prompt the player. It's going to pop up with that little window that says buy now or whatever. And then we're going to use the, um, it's going to prompt the player with this ID. So that's how that works. So what's going to happen is if we jump into game, we'll be able to click on the button and it will prompt us with the window. This, um, while in studio, it will be a test purchase. It will not charge your account, so you can hit buy now. It'll be fine. But as you can see, nothing happens. It just lets us buy it. Nothing happens. So you don't want to do that because you don't want people buying for no reason. They're not going to get anything. So we're going to create a small little leader scrap, a leader stat script. If you have a data store, oop, not a module script, just a regular script. If you have a data store, like one of the ones in my previous tutorial, you can just leave it. Um, so you can skip this part, but for people who don't, for just tutorial purposes, we're going to create a small leader stat so I can show you how it works. So this function here, player.player .player added fun connect function new player, um, it's a function. So it fires when a player is added, um, basically when a player joins, um, it'll fire this function. This just represents it. It gets more into like specifics. So when a literal player gets added into this object here, then it's going to fire. But this basically just represents if a, um, when a player joins, basically. Scripting just gets a little specific sometimes. Um, we're going to create um, a variable called leader stats. And this is going to represent instance.new. Let me scroll in for you guys. Instance.new folder new player. Our new player represents the player that joined the game. 
and this right here instance on new it's creating a new instance which is folder and the parent or what it's going to be placed into is going to be our player hit enter um, you can hit tab to scooch forward and we're going to set the name so leader name equals leader stats with a lowercase so it pops up um, in game as on a leaderboard on the right top corner of your screen which I'll show you in a minute and then we're going to create another variable called point which we're going to make another instance but this one's going to be number value and we're going to place this inside of the leader stats and then the points we're going to set the name the name um, to points and here is where you would um, oops, um, you would set the value if you wanted to so um, so this value would represent the starting value what the player is going to start with when they join the game this this example of a leaderboard will always always have the player starting with five points there is something called a data store where you can load and save the player's data which i do have a tutorial out so you guys can go check that out but this is just re to represent a tutorial so it is interchangeable the data store is basically exactly this but we go more into depth um on saving these values so it will be exactly the same but i do not want a starting value so we're going to remove that and now you can go ahead and name this leader stats so now if we join into game we will have a leaderboard with point all right still even though we have a leader stat it still does not give us our points because we have not scripted it in so in the script server er, server script service we're going to insert another script and this script is going to um, represent when we purchase it so we're going to create then we're going to make another marketplace service variable like we did in the other script game get service oops i messed it up game get service uh, sorry i just got lost okay uh market marketplace service boom like that okay all right now we're going to create a function and this is going to be the process receipt info or sorry i'm just like getting a little confused okay so this this is another way you can have a function this is just a function so this is not going to fire well we haven't scripted it yet but having this just creates a function no this should be receipt receipt info so this is just a function we can write in here but nothing will happen nothing will use this function until we make it use this function so we're gonna do local player equals game get service players oop crap I messed up a little bit okay uh we're gonna do colon get player by user ID and then we're gonna use receipt info dot player ID so what this is doing is our receipt info when we script it later or you know we should script it now so i can explain it so just go outside of the function make sure you're outside of the function we're going to type marketplace service dot process receipt equals process receipt so basically oh there shouldn't be okay so it's going to go in this and then process receipt is something that's in there uh, I don't know if we use it in here. No. So prompt purchase. You know what a receipt is. It's when, um, you know, you buy something. So this is basically means, oh, the player or the marketplace service was used in this game to buy something. So now we're going to look at our receipt, and which is this function. So we're going to do process receipt. It's going to fire this function. We're, we're going to write a little bit more. And it's going to use the receipt info, which is just getting the info from this right here and it's going to get the player by the user id which is getting the player id from our receipt info so they're looking at our receipt they're like oh we got a player id so we're going to find the player in the game 
by using this ID since we can't do it because this is just a regular script. So we can't use a local player like we did previously. So now we're going to script, um, we're going to do if not player then. So what this is going to do is we're going to do return enum.product purchase decision dot not processed yet. So this basically represents player does not exist left game. So this, this basically means, oh, if um, the player purchased it, but they left before anything got to happen or the game crashed or something like that, it will not, um, it will not, I don't know if it'll make you buy it or if it will, yeah, I think it just doesn't let you buy it. It just cancels the order basically, whatever. So that does that. So you're going to go after the end, make sure that there's space so we can just, so you can select everything, hit tab, it'll scooch it forward. All right, and then we can go back down. And now we're going to do, so I'm going to get a little comment here. So everything below this point will control what happens when the player buys this script. But before we do that, we're going to type one more thing. We're going to do return, do return enum process product purchase decision dot purchase granted so this is just gonna after we do this it's gonna be okay um it went through we're going to do a print so print player dot name dot dot just bought space um speech mark dot dot space receipt info dot product id so the print basically is going to print it in our output which is a basically it displays the, any errors or anything with your game it basically shows you what's happening in your game text based instead of like a visual so it's going to print this in the output and it's going to say that this person just bought this product and now here's where we're going to type where it gives the player their points so we're going to type player dot leader stats dot points dot value equals and instead of just doing equals plus a um, hundred we're going to just the way you do it on Roblox is you do you take that value again and then add the value to it so the value of this will equal the current value of this plus 100 so if we go into testing to test mode You should be able to click our button, buy it, and we get our point. And how the dev product works is you can keep purchasing it and keep purchasing it. Thank you guys so much for watching my tutorial. I'm so glad you guys are supporting my channel. I've been getting so much support in the last couple weeks. Uh, I am working on a lot. Um, make sure that you guys join the Discord to get updated on when my videos come out as well as when they're currently being made, if you want to see. So if you guys are interested, make sure you join my description or my Discord link in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.